Yesterday there was an iftar event organized in Toronto and uh, they did the iftar in the city hall. And two things struck my mind when I was uh, attending the event. One of the young people spoke about uh, his cousin who's arrested by the uh, either at, uh, by the Israeli Defense Force and he was after released everybody was concerned about him and they said to him how are you doing he said back to his cousin how are you doing because we have been keeping uh, in touch and update to your activities in Canada supporting the people of Gaza so this is something yani, that have uh, attracted my attention uh, that despite of the fact we live in pain and sorrow and despite of the fact that we are sometimes feeling helpless that, that we're unable to do much for the people of Gaza it's quite the opposite that whatever we're doing here of advocacy work of charitable work is indeed recognized by the people of Gaza and their difficult time. And indeed, they are going through a very difficult time. Because among you know the speakers who spoke last night was one of the medical doctors who came back. And he shared, unfortunately, painful stories, very graphic stories of how the, uh, the Israeli forces do not recognize, unfortunately, civilians, how they're brutally uh, using massive force into killing, into demolishing, into, uh, you know, uh, creating a very difficult life for the survivors uh, of their attacks. And he was sharing with us how one of the young uh, girls about nine years old, whose house was bombarded. And then, you know, they, they took her out of the rebels when she was with her family members, and she was taken to the hospital to mutilate some of her parts because of the, the you know, the, the, the magnitude of the explosion that hit their house. And then when she, when the surgery was finished, she looked around to see if she can get the support from her immediate family members. And unfortunately, none of her family members, immediate family members, were present. And he was saying that this is a girl, you know, if, if we have a girl by her age in, in Canada, and she, she, she is to go through a, a, a medical surgery, then, you know, she will get the family support, the, the hospital support. She will be, you know, considered as, you know, as a patient. Said, unfortunately, that's not the same for the children of Gaza. Uh, surgeries are done with the lack of, you know, proper, uh, with, you know, medications, uh, proper you know, uh, uh, equipment, and most of the time are done without even morphine. And, 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 and this is what exactly the situation in Gaza is. And this is why we are taking the time and we're going out of our routine because in a time like this in Ramadan, many of us will be spending their time in Ertikaf, knowing that you know in the last 10 days of the month of Ramadan, we are you know catching or trying to catch Laylatul Qadr. And the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, is to do Ertikaf during the last 10 days of the month of Ramadan. But at the same time, we need to be mindful and aware that the Prophet said that for me to uh, look after the need of my brother uh, uh, and until I'm done with it is better than doing i'tikaf in Masjid Hada, doing i'tikaf in the Masjid of the Prophet for a whole month. And what is even more, you know, surprising, not surprising, because this is how Islam wants us to be mindful of our responsibilities and duties to each other as, as one ummah that feels the pain of each other and feels the joy of each other. 
the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, أَلَا أُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِأَفْضَلْ مِنْ لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ Should I inform you of what is more rewarding than Laylat al-Qadr? حَارِسٌ يَحْرُسُ بِأَرْضٍ لَعَلَّهُ لَيَرْجُعُ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِ أَبَدًا A person standing in guard in a land where he fears that he might not be able to go to his family again. And also, in another you know, uh, uh, hadith, what is better than Laylat al-Qadr is قيام ساعة قيام ساعة في سبيل الله خير من قيام ليلة القدر عند الحجر الأسود. Those who have gone to Umrah in Ramadan, if you were lucky to catch ليلة القدر in Mecca, it's not a, a, the night would not be equal to a thousand months. It would rather be almost equal to a thousand a million months. Anything in Mecca is multiplied by a hundred thousand. And when you work out the math, you're talking about a massive reward from Allah Azza wa Jalla. And if you were to be able to make it to Mecca in you know, last 10 days, those who have gone there know that it is impossible almost to pray around the Kaaba. So imagine that you, despite of the challenges and the expensive you know, uh, cost for Umrah, you made it to Mecca and you were able to despite of the challenges and restrictions from the guards, be able to pray all the night in front of the Hajj of Aswad. This is not even equal to standing in the path of Allah for one hour, similar to what the people of Gaza and the people of Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa are doing right now. To defend the honor and integrity of the Muslim Ummah. So indeed, we need to feel that what we're engaged in right now is in the scale of Allah Azza wa Jal, could be more rewarding than observing Laylat al-Qadr. Not to be little Laylat al-Qadr and its rewards and our, you know, inshallah engagement after we finish from this, we'll be going to the masjid to inshallah stay until Taraweeh and, 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 and observe inshallah the khidmat al-Qur'an and, and listen to the beautiful dua that will be, you know, given at the end of the khidmat al-Qur'an, hoping that Allah Azza will bless us and give us the barakah and we will be inshallah from among those who will be granted the salvation from the hellfire and we will be inshallah from those who will be blessed that their dua will be accepted but at the same time we need to know that this luxury that we will be enjoying is not available to the people of us and I call it luxury it's a luxury nowadays to go to masjid and to be able to enjoy you know the comfort of sitting in a masjid whether it is cold or it is, it is warm you know, I recall this, what this doctor was saying, that he was there in December, in the coldest month, in for the people of Gaza. And he said, the temperature there is about around zero degree, one or two. And we were sitting, standing in the, you know, Nathan Square, Philip, Philip, Nathan, Nathan Phillips Square, in the city hall, and the temperature was around that, you know, around, around zero. But many of us, including myself, was not able to stand it. I felt my, my, my toes were freezing, my fingers were freezing, and I was communicating with the organizer, brothers, for Allah's sake, can you rush? We need to, you know, make it quick so we can go home. I, I'm unable to, you know, to, to handle this. I said, subhanAllah, this is a lifestyle now for the children of Gaza. He said, if you're, you know, many people have lost their homes. If they're lucky, they will be able to get a, 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 you know, a mattress or a cushion that they are able to sleep on. If not, then probably a rag or, or, or a plastic you know, uh, cover that would be you know, placed on the ground as we've seen it on social media, how they're now living in tents. This is, this is the reality of what's happening يعني, to the people of Gaza. And unfortunately, happening in front of the Muslim leadership eyes. And I said it today in my Jum'ah khutbah. Uh, Muslim leaderships of the Muslim Ummah are dead. They're only alive to eat and sleep and enjoy their life. But Alhamdulillah, the Muslim Ummah across the globe is boiling. All of us like sleep at night. I'm sure that all of us, when we go to sleep, we have difficulty to sleep knowing that our brothers and sisters in Gaza uh, are not able to get the basic, the bare minimum to provide for their own children. Alhamdulillah, all of us love our children, our children love us. But يعني, imagine what is a child is going through in Gaza after losing the parents. 
Imagine what a mother or a father is feeling in a desperate you know, situation, trying to find something for their children. In one of the cities we went to, yani we, I was talking and one of the sisters, she, fought, you know, she overreacted and, and she was unconscious. Why? Because when she heard me talking about what's happening in Gaza, PTSD, flashback memories came back to her mind because she was a refugee coming from Gaza. She knew what exactly I'm talking about because she lived it. And these flashback memories, which is what we call in psychology PTSD, is real. She, she just once again reacted and she, could, she lived that horror once again. She shared with me later on and said that she communicated with her sister. Her sister told her that it's now time for a fall. She said to her, what did you prepare for your children? She said, nothing. She said, you don't have any food? She said, no, no, I have saved a can of food, feta beans. How big is a can of feta beans? She said, I, 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 I said to myself, rather than having this can of feta beans for the family as a iftar, we want to save it for suhoor so they are able to, to sustain the day, at least with something in their stomach. That's, yani, that's happening in Gaza. Where is Gaza? In the center of the Muslim world. In the center of the Muslim world, unfortunately. That's a fact. But Allah and we are alive. And we will not, we will not forget what's happening to the Muslim Ummah. Whether it's in Gaza, or in al Dafa, or in Sudan, or in Somalia. Because I was talking in one of the Jum'a khutbas and a brother came to me, one of the medical doctors who have participated in one of the, you know, he participates in the programs, uh, maybe Doctors Without Borders. And he said to me, brother, I know, I know what's happening in Gaza. But he said to me, Wallahi, there's even a dire situation in, in Somalia. And I said to him, Wallahi, akhi, I know. But يعني, sometimes you just feel helpless. How much are you able to you talk about? يعني, this is, this is what is happening in the Muslim Ummah. And we know this is temporary, by the way. This is temporary. Because one of the things I always try to you know, in, you know, provide when I talk is, is to provide hope. Because despite of how dire the situation is, and despite how difficult it is, the people of Gaza have provided for us something that we could not find in the lectures we listen to in our Masajid. We could not find from, you know, reading books. In the events I have been attending with refugees or returnees coming back from Gaza, you feel they have resilience that is يعني, amazing, beyond the imagination. You feel that they're, 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 they're like, you know, beyond the human, you know, being and, 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 you know, and feelings. They are rooted in their belief. They are firmly believing that this is nothing but a, cha a challenge from Allah. This is a test. They firmly know that the Hasib al Nasu Yutra wa Yahulu Amanna wa Huma Yaftanun wa la Qatfatanna la Dina min Qabli. That's why you will find the, the elder in Gaza, the, the old woman, saying, Hasbi Allah wa Ni'ma al Wakil. She said, We don't need the, the Muslim leadership. We don't need it. Khalas, we, we give up on them. We have Allah, and Allah is enough for us. And we will say the same. We have Allah, and Allah is enough for us. Because regardless of how difficult the situation is, we have firm belief, firm belief that Allah Azza is giving victory to the name of Allah. We have firm belief that in the Quran, Allah Azza just said, كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَأَقْلِبَنَّهَا This is a firm belief. This is a Quran we recite. And that firm belief should be translating our anger, our feelings of despair into an energy that motivates us and keeps us going all the way until we are able to pray in the Masjid Al-Aqsa Amin of We don't want to feel despair. We don't want to allow you know, depression to creep to our hearts, but rather we want to translate this energy into something that pushes us, motivates us. As I was you know, sitting last night in the, in, in the call, I said, how silly I am, like how, how soft is this is how I am being. I need, I need to, to push myself. I need to think of what my brothers and sisters are going through. 
and I need to do something that will, will alleviate their suffering, whether it is engaged in advocacy, advocacy work, or engage in a charitable work like tonight's work, or to make dua for them, which is a very powerful tool that the mighty Allah Azza wa have given to us, Ummah Muhammad, that we firmly believe in. So I hope tonight, inshallah, despite the small number we have here today, that this is something that we will take back. All of us, alhamdulillah, our community representatives, all of us have connections with our families, with our friends. All of us can do something. And inshallah, Brother Mahmoud, I'm sure, will be talking to you about what they are doing and the projects they are working on and how despite of what we hear in the news that there is a siege which is true and there is difficulty for it to want to be able to make its way to Gaza how they manage with their own you know, uh, connections with their own pr projects that have established in the past to be able to provide a drop of water and to the mouth of those who are thirsty how they're able to provide a, a, a bite, not even a bite, maybe a spoon of a soup that would be you know, cherishing and nourishing the, the, the children and the people there to keep them going in their life. May Allah Azza wa Jalla help us all to be able to stand for the, the people who are in a difficult situation. May Allah help us to be able to do something to change their condition. And may Allah Azza wa eyes with the victory of his name, Allah Ameen. Wa alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.